Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. Today we're going to paint a very, very famous and important painting by Claude Monet. This is called Impression Sunrise. He painted it in 1872 and it might not be what you think of when you think of Monet. Most people think of his really more famous water lilies that he painted later in his life, but this one is ultra important because the impression part of the impression sunrise is where the name of the impressionist art movement came from this is the painting that started the movement and that is huge when he first painted it and exhibited it along with some other people who were doing some similar things um the critics hated it they were like what is this trash it doesn't look like anything but what monet was trying to do was capture the light accurately and so these were really fast paintings most of them were painted outside this was when paint was first able to be done outside because it was first coming this is the first time it was coming in tubes also this is right after cameras showed up and so people didn't really feel like they had to capture everything perfectly realistically anymore also, um, Monet's uh, signature lines, those happened because this was also the first time when um, the, that kind of paintbrush came out with a fat ferrule. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's see. Here's a paintbrush, right? This is the ferrule. This is when it's been smushed flat, okay? Before that, they were all still round like this and you can see how you can get better little lines like that with this kind of paintbrush also most of monet's paintings were huge if you've ever seen one of them in person they are the size of a wall in your house at least they're they're ginormous also he was painting in oils and these are watercolor brushes so you know completely different situation anyway but the, this is this was a revolution in the art world and that's why it's important and that's why we're talking about it and making an attempt to paint something kind of like it today. So here's what you need. You need a pencil with a good eraser on it or a separate eraser, whatever you have. Um, and you need something to color it with. Uh, I'm gonna use watercolor. I have watercolor paper here too. You need paper. Um, you don't have to use watercolor. You can use crayons, you can use markers, you can use whatever you wanna use. Um, also, I mean, this looks a little bit different than the, the watercolor palette I usually have for Art Club. And these are tubes of watercolor. These are the same, it's the same paint that is in those little pans, but they're in, they're in tubes and the paint's still liquid. So I'm just going to put little dots on, on this palette when we get to it. And the only reason I'm doing this, these are exactly the same, is because I don't have this orange on a palette, like in, in a pan already. And that's the only reason we're gonna do it. And you also see we're only using two colors and we'll get to that later on. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to use this specific orange because it has a lot of red in it, but we'll get to that. Anyway, let's get started with our painting. Okay, on the left side of the screen, you usually see one painting. This time you see two. You see, okay, you see two copies of one. The one, the higher one, the one that um, isn't quite as vivid, that is an actual picture of the painting that we're doing. The bottom one, it can kind of be hard to see stuff in the distance. Um, the bottom one is one, I just put it in a photo editing app and just heightened the contrast and just made it easier to see. So you can see more clearly what's going on in the painting. Um, for the traceable, that's what I used. For this, I'm going by the original painting. I have my reference over here because I want to get, I don't want the colors to be that far off because those are super far off colors. Anyway, let's draw this thing. This is super easy. I'm going to call this a, a detail level one. And if I, I think I've explained that before, it's just the amount of time required to do these things. It's not difficulty level. You can totally do all of them. If you, even if you've never really drawn or painted before this, is, they're not levels. They are just the amount of time that you should expect to get a, to, to put into it to get a, a result that you like. And that's all. And this is going to be a level one because this one's going to be super easy. Okay. Now, one thing here is this is not going to be one that we line. You see, I don't have a pen. Um, 
we're going to do all of this with paint because it's so foggy. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to use really light lines and you should be in a, well, okay. I'm going to use them dark, make them darker than I would for myself just so you can see them. But the lighter you draw this, the better off you'll be because your marks won't show up through the painting as much. And um, if you make a mistake, if you do something that you don't like, you'll be able to erase it easier. And that's one thing, just be sure you have a good eraser because we're gonna be making some lines that we do have to erase pretty much, like there's just no getting around it. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna put a horizon in. The horizon is a little bit, and you see like, we're gonna be drawing around the horizon. I'm just putting it where it is so we know exactly where it is. Um, you can use a straight edge if you want. You don't have to. I happen to have this little strip of scrap watercolor paper that I made cutting this down to eight by 10. So I'm gonna say kind of arbitrarily, it's here, it's above the halfway point, right? But not all the way up to a th third. Hmm, let's see. Doom. Yeah, I'm not too far off. Okay, I was just measuring with my pencil. Anyway, okay, and we can put the sun here. The sun's about, oh, it's on the right side over here. They're just going to draw a circle. Draw it as light as you can so the line doesn't show up much. I'm probably going to go back with an eraser after this or before I watercolor to, to erase some of these lines a little bit. This is Ollie. You can probably see him. Yep. My uh, feline assistant. Okay. So here's how we're going to approach this. As you see in the back, there are some ships and things over here and some cranes and stuff it looks like over here. And there are some hills it looks like in the background. And there are um, some fishing boats. I don't know what they are. Some boats down here and then just some like lines like the reflection and that's that's it okay so here's what i'm going to do um the background we have to take into account how we're going to paint this when we're doing all of this um the background is going to be painted light and then we're going to paint some darker stuff over it so all i'm going to do is i'm going to decide where some of these boats are and their reflection and just kind of put in the shapes very lightly Okay, because we're going to paint over all of it and then we're going to go back and then and paint some of it darker so it shows up a little bit. Okay, so we have our horizon line. I'm going to start. There's this ship looking thing here. But yeah, should be using the one with the upped contrast. Okay, so it starts a little bit above, just a little. And then it kind of comes down like this that because he was just doing this in paint strokes and you can't really pull off a um an oil painting look at least i can't with uh with watercolor so there's the vague shape of that and then i'm gonna do some lines up 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 and then make some lines for sales. I can't see these too well. I can see some of them reasonably well, but going on the original painting, I can't see him too well, but I don't really think it matters that much. I don't know how accurate he was even trying to be in this case. Um, Cause he was just, he was getting the impression of it. He wasn't trying to exactly capture what was going on. Okay my lines in the um in the traceable like especially for the sale lines are probably gonna look so different but that's okay um let's see there's that and then we have ollie playing on the aquarium we have a ship actually you know what i'm gonna look i'm gonna follow the traceable on this one because i can see it better okay so below the horizon line a little bit there's another ship and I'm gonna do that number and then I'm gonna angle it down this way and then that's right there. And this is, these include, oh, there are 
three up on the second one, which is way taller than I thought it was. Nothing. Okay. Um, but these shapes include the reflection. So it's like the ship and the reflection just all in one shape and they're all going to be the same color. So that's why it kind of looks weird. Let's see. Let's do a line here. There was a line through that. Even when I was doing this, I was having a hard time seeing exactly where these lines are because I was trying to capture it as accurately as possible, but I wasn't very good at it. Okay, and so we'll do the, go ahead and do the reflection of this part. And this really isn't accurate either. And I can't really tell if, um, how accurate Monet's really was or whether he was just kind of arbitrary, arbitrarily drawing lines like I am. It's like, I don't know what that looks like. It's foggy back there. Okay. And so we have that. And that's what we're going, going for. We'll just do this one too. Just draw lines down like that. Okay, and then some more like that. These are, this is a really simple thing to draw because we're really just doing lines. I guess all drawing is lines, so. Okay, a couple there. And then, ooh, I see in the traceable, I forgot a horizon line. We will work on that. So kind of coming above this one and like that. And then right there, it's like the smokestack thing. <sighs> really hard to tell. Okay, so I'm going to put that there and put its little reflection there. And then there's some smoke coming out of it. Let's draw it like that. And then there's, I don't know, maybe a buoy or something over here. I'm going to draw a line for that. And then it kind of comes down like that. Right, and then there's something up here, and it's reflection down here. That's too big. Yeah, erasers. Maybe this is, yeah, I guess this just qualifies as like my impression of Monet's impression. <laughs> this stuff isn't, it's not easy to replicate even paintings that look like they're easy. It's especially not easy, I guess. Okay, so we have our horizon line there. We'll go back and erase some of that. And I'm gonna come back here and put some little hills that go about to the end of this ship right there. And then there's some bigger hills, but we'll, well, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. So here's our horizon and we have from here coming a pretty big hill and it comes down here, right? And that goes right below the horizon line like that. Actually it goes more than that. That's okay. Actually, yeah, I'm going to move it a little bit because we want it below farther below the horizon line because the second one is also kind of below. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit like that. Okay. And then this one is smaller and in the distance and it comes down like that under the sun and just below the horizon line. And then there's this other one that comes down like that. Oh, I don't like that one. It comes down like, I want it to go up more and not be as long. There we go, like that, okay? And then the horizon line continues over here. Okay, let's see. Next, starting what about halfway from this or so is maybe up here or some sort of barge or something. Um, so I'm going to draw kind of a wavy line there to show those strokes. And we'll do a line across here and it goes about to the end of that, like that. And then one all the way back from here. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight. And then there's like a shadow coming, but it comes from the other side of the sun to allow for that reflection. And it comes down like that. Okay. Coming up from this 
And this is one of the parts that we're going to have to erase some is this long pole like that. It's a long skinny pole and then a shorter one that goes up to the bottom of that hill. All right. And then one that it's bigger at, I mean, it's smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom like that. And then there's one over here that's slanted. These are all coming about up to where the land is. Okay. And then there's this big crane looking thing. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right there so we know exactly where it's coming from. And that comes down here maybe. Okay. And this keeps going. <laughs> And then let's see, there's a ship or something back there. There's a line, two sail things, something like that through there. And then from here it goes over here. And those are just like strokes of paint. And I don't know what exactly what they're supposed to represent. So I'm just going to draw some lines and we're going to make darker lines than what um, than what our underpainting is or what our first layer is. And then up here we have, let's see, a line here, two here, this line's going through them, and then we have that. Hmm. My painting is weirdly cut off right there. How did that happen? Let me go back to the original. Weird. Oh wait, no, that's just, I just drew it weird. That's all. So here's this thing and it comes down like that or so. It looks like a crane or something like that. I don't know what it is. So here's this part, right? And this is really the, the bulk of it. Let's put in the reflection for the sun. And this is just like that smoke down there. It starts like that. And then we're not going to do the individual lines just because we're doing watercolor. And that would be really, really hard to do and would take forever. So I'm just going to draw this down. It goes not all the way to the bottom. And that's not straight. better. Okay. So let's put these little boats in. The first one's kind of up in this gap and it's pretty small. So I'm just going to draw a line here and a line like that. All right. Doesn't need to be exact because Monet wasn't being exact. Uh, there's like a person there or something and another one here and another small one here. And there are a couple over here here. Okay. And let's see, there's another one here. This is about here. It's a little bit bigger because it's a little bit closer. And this one, like, oops, like that. And it has like this shadow or something coming out like that. And then heads or I assume I assume heads like that and then there's something long over here and then this kind of just comes down like that and I don't like the way that looks so I'm going to redo that part let's see yeah, let's farther toward the back better Okay, and then there's this one here. It's like bigger than all of them. And it's just kind of shaped like this because it includes the boat and its reflection. Okay, I'm just drawing the general shape of it. And here we have, so there's a head, right? back, body, pole, or something. I'm not sure what that is, but it's a line. So 
Um, and then it looks like somebody's sitting. Reminds me of Venice and those the boats that I can't think of the name of right now. So here's that. Also, there are darker marks in the water that I am just going to show like this. There's definitely some, in, some coming off of that. And it's just like shadows, not waves, but like ripples. And just kind of put them around. They're just little horizontal lines. So you got those. There's some here. There. You don't need to draw all of them he put in. You can put as many or as few as you want. Okay, oops, I don't want that. Let's put a few around. Actually, the space is pretty well empty. There are a few over here. Okay, well, there are a few more. <laughs> Okay, and here is our drawing of, per, uh, of Impression Sunrise. What we need to do now is go back and erase some. And that's going to be the stuff where lines are going through stuff where it shouldn't be. Um, and if you drew some stuff particularly heavy like this, like I did, you might want to go back and um, erase it lightly. I'm going to use a different eraser to do that to make it easier, but you can use whatever eraser you have. Just remember to get all of the lines that you want off of the painting off now because once you put water on it or once you put watercolor on it, uh, you will not be able to get the the pencil off anymore it just makes the pencil like a pen so erase what you want lighten any lines that you want or can uh, and then we'll get to painting okay now here's the paint situation we only need two colors you need a blue and and an orange okay um, the reason I'm using this specific orange this is called transparent pearl orange is only because it's a ready orange um, uh, the and it's also the only reason I'm not using that little palette that I usually use it's because that orange is a very very yellowy one and I would have to add red to it and I really like the idea of doing it in two colors so if you just have like a normal orange that isn't like super yellow you're fine any blue just fine so here's what I'm gonna do uh, I'm going to put, and remember, this is the same paint. There is no difference between this and what's in a pan. It's just that this is still liquid paint, and the only reason that I'm not using paint in pans is because this guy I do not have in a pan. So, um, some artists do paint watercolor like this, and they say that you can get like brighter, more vivid colors. This is certainly not what I'm go <laughs> what I'm going for here, um, and this is not generally how I paint. So, uh, so we'll see how it turns out. It'll be an adventure, but I guess art club is always an adventure. So I'm going to put a little bit there. Oh, that's way too much. Oof. Um, and a little bit here. Make sure you can see. This is a, it comes out of the tube. Oh, well, no, that looks about accurate. Okay. When it dries, it turns kind of brownie looking. Okay, so here's how we're going to tackle this. The first thing we're going to paint is going to be the orange, okay? And then we're going to paint the blue. And a couple paintings back, I don't even remember which one it was, we did um, a wet and wet technique, which meant that we painted the background with water and then went back with some paint and that's what we're going to do 
at the top, I think. But the first thing, well, we'll do, we'll do the orange first. That'll be easier because we need to get this super duper bright sun in. So we're going to paint the sun and we're going to paint the sun's reflection here. And we're just going to, I'm just going to do this whole thing. You can do it in the little lines if you want to have to go back and like repaint all around that. That's why I did it like this because that's really hard to pull off without a, a paint that stays where it is because watercolor runs around. And then um, I'm going to paint to about here, uh, maybe like that. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna paint that orange. Very, very light, like just a tiny bit. So let's just start with a vivid or orange here and one here. Okay, you see I watered it down a little bit here because that's lighter really than that. And this up here is much lighter, so I'm going to do that. Here's what I'm going to do with this, okay? I'm going to paint this. Well, that's kind of orangey, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to paint this right here or so with water, okay? Now, about like that, okay? So, and then I'm going to go get, I'm going to get some of that, but I'm going to water it down a lot. And then, where's my strip of paper? Test it out. Ooh, yes. We need more water than that. Okay. Oof, we need more paint than that. And get the... Yeah, that'll do. Okay, and then that, if, if you have a light orange over here, um, you will still be able to put blue on it without it looking bad. So I'm just going to go in here and just do some quick strokes and we're just going to overlap the blue once the orange is dry. See I'm just going ahead and painting over the um, the smoke because we'll be able to do that but I'm going to the top of the land. Hey. And that's it for orange. So let's see. Next, what I'm going to do is dry it and we're going to put light blue here um, and kind of overlap it a little bit um, and finish the sky and then we're going to put light blue all in the water except for this and then we're going to go back with some darker colors and make the actual content of the painting but dry first. Dry, make sure it's 100% dry before you start adding blue or else it'll mix up and it won't look good. Okay, my painting is dry. And here's what I'm going to do. Now, I said you didn't want them to mix, but you kind of, let me show you. Okay, so I know I've featured the color wheel before. I'll put it up here so you see what's going on. When the, the colors that are across from each other are called complements. So um, red is a complement of green. Uh, yellow is a complement of purple. Um, and then, but if you look, you'll see that orange is across from blue, okay? And what happens when you mix complements is it will gray them out. It will make them less vibrant. When you mix two opposite colors, it'll gray them out. And if you, and if you mix them um, at high concentration, it, for a lot of them, you can even make black. It makes a, it'll make a really, really dark color. So some of the best blacks in watercolor are pretty much very similar. I mean, you might a brown in this blue that we're about to use, and we're just going to use orange. But you make brown with by mixing blue with orange anyway. So, anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We don't want a super bright blue, and this is this is a really bright blue. Let Let's see. We did it undiluted, or well, okay, undiluted by orange. You just get some of it down here we'd end up with a really, really brighter color than what we want. We want it to be grayer than this blue, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get some blue. See, actually we can mix it into this. What? So we're gonna mix some blue into that. You saw that was just that orange that we just mixed for that. And then we get, what color is that? That is gray. Okay, but we don't want it that gray. We want it bluer, so we're going to add more blue to it. And then we're going to try it again, a little bit more. 
We want a really bluey gray. Yeah, that looks good to me. We definitely don't want it saturated. So you see it's desaturated. That means it's just not as vibrant as it was before. So this is a great color. We're going to go in here. Okay, we'll make sure it's that needs to be diluted more. It needs more water in it. And you can do this with any orange and any blue uh, paint you have. That's way better. Okay, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to paint this. And then there are like some clouds and stuff. And I'm just going to show that by little streaks over here like that. And then, ah, I don't want pure blue. That would be not good. And I'm going to just come, in de come down and paint all this down here. Only thing I'm being careful about is that ultra neato and vivid sun. I do not want to get... I do not want to mess that up because that's super cool. That's uh, what really stands out to me anyway about Impression Sunrise. Okay. Oh no, don't do that. Yeah. Oh, good. Caught it early enough. Okay. I'm going to come over here. Doesn't need to be perfectly smooth or anything like that. And don't worry going over things like that because the stuff behind it is darker, okay? So here is our sky. And I'm just putting some streaks in there. You see how I'm doing it? It's not, not a big deal, okay? And there's the sky. Next up, I'm going to do the water and the water I'm going to do, we want, I wanted a little bit less blue. So I'm going to add some more orange to it. That's an orangey blue, isn't it? Let's see. Let's see what color this makes. And we will just adjust. Oh, that's nice. That's a little bit more blue. Let's see. It's actually not bad. We just need it to be more potent than that. Nope. Ooh, that's a lot of orange. Let's see what this looks like. We might end up with a brown out of that. No? Wow. Okay. Some serious gray, though. I want it a little bit bluer than that. And we want this. Oh, really? I mean, it's a, about... It's really not that much different, is it, than the sky? I don't want it quite as blue as the sky was, though. Let's see. Yeah, that'll do. That's a nice gray. Okay. So, and you see, like, it looks to me like Monet did it in a, in a couple layers to the bottom because there's kind of like the, the orange reflection from the sky over on this side um, and more blue over here, which is maybe what we should do. No, not really. But you know what I'm going to do? No, we're going to leave it like this. Okay, this is a detail level one painting, and we are going to leave it that way. And I see I forgot the horizon line over here. We just need to remember where that is. I did that on the traceable two. Oh, there. And remember, once uh, slightly leave that in so we know where it is. Okay, once you watercolor over something, you can't erase it anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go here and paint... Everything else blue. This will be our, or this gray color. Um, this will be our first layer because see, we're going to be going back over these hills. So paint, paint the hills and stuff. Paint everything this gray color. And we're going to go back and add blue to it to darken it later on. Don't, don't paint this part again because that's, that's our vivid part. But everything else. Just, just paint this color, whatever color you ended up with. Um, yeah, that'll be that'll be good. If yours is blue ear, that's that's perfectly fine too. If it's orange ear, that's perfectly fine. So don't worry about that. Just this is just kind of like the back coat of things. So now we have blue, orange, uh, gray. Right, and we're going to go back with some super dark gray that's almost black on these. And for the rest of it, we're just going to use a bluey color um, with a little bit of orange in it. 
Um, so it's darker than that, but it all kind of blends in and what really sticks out is the sun and its reflection. So before I do any of that though, I need to dry it. So let's dry it again. My painting is dry. Now here's what we're going to do. All of this stuff kind of back here is pretty much the same color. Um, it's just, it's kind of a shade darker than this blue of the sky. It's also, I think, a little bit bluer. So we're going to go in and we're going to do, see, I'm going to get some blue first because I want it to be mostly blue, but I definitely don't want it to be like full on power blue. And I don't really want it to be dark either. So that looks like I added way too much orange. So we'll add way too much blue. See how little of this painting, this paint I'm using? The one, one reason that some people use two watercolors is that it ends up less expensive. That's definitely my experience. This will be darker than all the rest of this, but it won't be like we don't want it full on power or anything, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and paint in these lines. Um and I'm just gonna paint the hills too. So I'm gonna first I'm gonna paint hmm, just so it like sticks out some. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get some of this and add just a little bit of it and add, can you see that? And add a little bit more water to it. Not that much, it'll do. Just added a little bit more water to it. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna paint these hills like that, that goes behind this boat. And over here. Don't worry about hitting the boat. Just don't go too far into the sky or the water. Which just means be, be a little careful, not terribly careful. Okay. So there's that. And now, of course, um, I don't want to run in that into that while it is wet. So I'm just going to dry this little bit really fast. I use a hair dryer. You can use other things. You can just blow on it for a minute. Like I'm not using a ton of paint, so it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. So here's our original color before we diluted it a little bit. And so now I'm just going to go in. It's a little bit darker. I'm going to paint the shapes of the ship. Oops, wrong one. I'm going to paint the shapes of the ships. Okay. And I'm not being picky about it. I'm going to paint these masts. They do not need to be perfect. We are, this is an impression. And when Monet painted this stuff, he was painting it fast because he was trying to get what it looked like um, in like pretty much almost a split second of sunlight. And so, ah, I keep going for that other one. So he, everything he was doing, this was outside, the sun was just coming up and you know how the, it only, things only look kind of like this for a little bit. Yeah, that's what he was, he was trying to paint this whole thing during that time. And you'll see, that's why a lot of Monet's paintings look like they were done really fast because they were, because they had to be, because he couldn't um, get with a camera and you still can't, he couldn't get an accurate picture. So paint all of these masts, I'm not being picky about about it but you see just using two colors we can get this whole painting I'm gonna paint this first boat but not these others okay we're gonna go back and make a darker color to get the other two boats but we're gonna get this one Ooh. watercolor is a very interesting medium So here's this side, and now I'm gonna go and paint this side. And that's just gonna be the same thing. 
going to paint this in and paint all of that um, with this same color that I painted over there and we are getting close to being done. Okay, um, I painted this bottom part. I'm going to go back and just do another coat, this, this shadow down here, but I'm going to let that dry first. Next, let's address the boats, and the way I'm going to do that is this is the darkest color, right? So we're going to get some blue. I'm going to use a bigger brush to mix. Okay, we're going to get some blue. Make sure you can see that. that we want it potent okay and we're gonna get some orange swap up all this blue that's left okay oh that's a nice dark color see that okay that's what we're going for. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to paint. I see I forgot a line right there, the last color, but that's okay because we still have it. I'm going to paint this color. There's one. I'm going to, might end up doing two coats on these. Um, but you see, isn't that pretty cool how you can get pretty much, I mean, a black out of orange and blue because they're complements. So I actually like made this part a little bit more uneven than it was because this reminded me of Bowser at the end of Super Mario 3. I know that totally dates me, but don't people still play that game when he's in his little thing with the propeller at the bottom and doing that? That's what that reminded me of. So I made it more uneven. Um, but yeah, so there's the, <laughs> there are the boats. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead while I still have a little paint and do these darkest lines of reflection on the waves like that let's see where else do we have some that are that dark there aren't many so I'm just gonna go there are a few though I'm just gonna go and make a few assorted um, lines and then we're gonna start with lighter ones okay so I'm going to go back to my small brush and I'm going to go up close to the stuff and I'm going to start putting those in. I'm going to use the same color that I used for this. So, and just put in, I can't even really see where I put those lines, but except for these. So I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff in over here, the ones that I can see. And this is just that same color as we painted all that with. Okay, you can put in as many of these little lines as you want. Um, it looks like there's some up there, and I know I have that too clean, but I'm going to leave it because that amuses me. Uh, and after all, it is my painting, just like your painting is your painting. Um, and I'm going to call this done. So the bottom over here, I'm going to put my initials. I'll just use this. It doesn't need to stand out a ton. You can sign your painting however you want, but you should sign it. Okay. It's signed. So I'll call this impression of an impression of a sunrise <laughs> by Monet. <laughs> so I hope you really like yours. I like mine. I think it turned out neato. And hopefully you learned some interesting things about the art world. Like this was a super revolutionary painting. And these days it might not be quite as well known as, um, as Monet's water lilies paintings, but this one is so important and it's great just to have this little chunk of art history 
to add to the pile I hope you're gaining from Art Club. Now if you're using this tape, as always, I will remind you to pull it off slowly and carefully so it doesn't take your paper with you and ruin your day. Oh, I think that looks nice. So if you paint it along or color it along, the traceable as always is in the, uh, in the description. Uh, if you paint it or color it along, we would love to see it. So please take a picture of it and send it to the library social media. We would love to see it and share what you're doing because it's just super cool and super fun. And I hope you learned something today and I hope you painted along with me and had a great time. I certainly did. I hope you like your painting. I have a feeling it's super awesome. And I will see you next week where we will make more classic art. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.